So how different are build back from Docker files, sir? Good question. So uh, Docker file is kind of like a big shell script. You can do anything in it. And in fact, it's multiple shell scripts because every layer you can put something else on that layer. And the ability to do anything has been a problem for our entire lives. Uh, my, my classic example is it means you can run MySQL. If you can do anything, that means a developer somewhere has installed and run MySQL unsupervised. Uh, that means they've got a version of MySQL running, probably isn't being updated, definitely doesn't have backups, um, and, 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 and you know, company data is being stored. So sometimes allowing your developers to do anything in order to solve problems means they go beyond their mandate. And that's hard to know. The joy of Docker files is developers can look on Stack Overflow and solve their own problems. The risk is they will start to go beyond their mandate uh, and to do things that maybe the organization does not want them to do. Install software, perhaps from vendors they're not paying subscriptions to, uh, stateful data that perhaps they're not prepared for that team to take responsibility for. They might install versions, but then never update them. So how do you make sure that all the CVEs are being patched? So, the risk of Docker files is the flip side of the power. The power is that you can do anything. The risk is not knowing what they did and how you, as an organization, look after it. So you look at a Docker file, it says from Ubuntu, or from Alpine. Great, what version? What, what is actually running in production? Just because it said from, like it is, a Docker file is prescriptive, it's not declarative, which is ironic given that the rest of, you know, the Kubernetes is all about these declarative, this is what should be, but it doesn't mean you know what's actually in the image uh, without poking around inside the image. So the thing I like about build packs is, is multiple. One is it means a developer doesn't need to care. Like they know they've got a Java app. They know they've got a Node.js app. Just do the thing, make it into the Docker. Is that what we're doing today? Docker, great, I don't care. Just turn it into that run it on the thing, let me test mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. um, but it means that the organization can care. Mm -hmm. So the developers don't need to care, but the organization can. And so with build packs, it means the organization can keep updating the build packs, latest version of Node, latest version of Ruby, and the developers will always get it. So it's a clean abstraction. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Docker file is this shared artifact without any clean way of knowing how it's being shared. Mm -hmm. you know, so what I mean by that is, if you were the team in charge of the base OS, making sure that all the apps you've got running on Kubernetes have got a patched version of Ubuntu, what is, how do you enact your responsibility? Do you have to go off to every app and update the Docker file to say a new ta tagged version of Ubuntu? Do you have to go to their CI system? Um, even if you could figure out how you did your job, you know, getting permission to do it might be more difficult. With, with the Cloud Native Build Packs, you can automatically rebase every image because you've got this clean separation of concerns. You can go to every image and rebase it against the latest base run system and uh, you're good to go. So the thing I like about Build Packs is that too. App developers get to never write a, a Docker file that they don't understand and don't care about. And the rest of the organization can provide all the services that of, of continuously updating.